four straight losses, one and six in their last seven games, three and seven in their last 10 games. Everything is off the rails. So what do we do? We try to fix it today on Locked on Wild. You're Locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Wild your first listen every day. And just as a reminder, Locked on Wild is free and available wherever you listen to podcasts. On today's episode of Locked on Wild, we recap the loss to the Calgary Flames, which dropped the Wild to a four-game losing streak, as well as a one-and-six stretch in their last seven games. So we look at some of the things that have led to the Minnesota Wild hitting the skids. We'll also talk about whether or not Marc-Andre Fleury makes sense as a Wild trade target ahead of tomorrow's game against the Philadelphia Flyers. My name is Seth Topal, host of Locked on Wild, your veteran captain of the show with over a decade's worth of experience covering your favorite Minnesota sports teams in a variety of social media methods. Thank you for joining today's episode of Locked on Wild here on a Wednesday. Wild loss last night. Again, four losses in a row, one and six. In their last seven games, three and seven in their last 10 games. It's not, it's not great. We're not having fun um, on this current stretch for the Wild. And, uh, you know, I, I've seen a lot of different reaction on social media to uh, what has gone on with the, uh, the Wild over the last handful of games. And rightfully so, it has not been a good product that has been put on the ice. Uh, for the Wild here recently. Now, there are some reasons that that can be pointed to, and uh, some of them are things that can be fixed by this Wild team, but some of them are deeper questions that we are going to have to kind of look at as we move forward to try to see what can be done uh, for this current season and what is something that is going to have to be looked at next season and beyond. Now. The result was very much the same that we've seen over the last 10 games as uh, the Wild fell behind early and uh, were able to mount a little bit of a charge before Calgary was able to uh, silence that and finish the game pretty emphatically. Um, the Wild did have a nice stretch. It was one particular shift by the uh, the Kaprizov line that uh, that looked as though they might be able to kind of build off of that, and uh, they they were not ultimately able to. Now, this is just, this is the thing that we were hoping wouldn't happen this season that um, is, is a balancing out and evening out, the other shoe dropping for uh, what the Wild were able to successfully do earlier in the season. Um, the Wild were able to, just offset what was uh, a legitimate concern about the center position heading into the season because um, Kaprizov, Socorello, uh, those guys, uh, the wings, Fiala and, Dumb, uh, Fiala and Boldy, were, uh, were handling the scoring and uh, were doing enough to uh, overcompensate for uh, the centers on those lines. And the fourth line started the season off strong. The third line, the uh, the Erickson Eck line, was uh, was able to do the same thing. But on this stretch, on this skid that the Wild are on, centered questions have uh, really started to impact the productivity of the wings on their particular lines. And you know we're seeing regression from a guy like Ryan Hartman. We're seeing struggles from. The uh, the fourth line, we're seeing struggles from, you know, 
Marcus Foligno. And Foligno, not a center, but, you know, another part to this, another piece to this puzzle is the depth scoring has uh, substantially dried up as well. And I know Foligno got a goal against Calgary, but that was his first goal since he was suspended. And as a lot of people have pointed out on social media, he just does not seem like he's been the same player since he came back from that suspension. And Dean Evason called for the team to play better heading into the Tuesday night matchup against the Flames. And they kind of did at stretches, but still, by and large, it was what we've seen over the last 10 games. It just has not been good enough to uh, to win. And Dean's comments after the game were pretty concise, but uh, as Jesse Pierce of the Bar Down Beauties podcast points out on Twitter, Dean saying, we did everything but score. Our power play sucked and our scoring sucked, but we took a step in the right direction and not backwards tonight. I think there are a couple of things that we've seen from the wild over this stretch. Number one, there are a handful of teams that are better than the Minnesota Wilds. That's not a crazy statement. Florida, Calgary, Colorado, Toronto, those are teams that make life tough on everybody. And I'm not breaking ground here. Those teams are some of the best in the NHL. They have been pretty much all season. Early in the year, the Wilds took on the Florida Panthers and lost a one-goal game on the road. That was when the Wild were just starting to hit that stretch where they played their best hockey of the season. Now we look at that most recent matchup and Florida pretty much controlled that game, uh, save a a couple of rallies by the Wilds. And I know the final score looks worse than it was because of the empty netters. So we saw Florida kind of flex on this Minnesota Wild team. We saw Toronto do what few teams have been able to do so far this year, is stymie this offense and uh, and win a, uh, a, a close game there. Uh, the Avalanche, it seems like, regardless of if the Wild have been playing well or not, have continued to handle business against this Wild team. And so, you know, you look at the competition level for this team. You look at the fact that the empty net magic was probably not something that was sustainable for the course of the season. That has corrected. And so you see you see all of these elements with the players that are missing out of the lineup right now. And we're seeing a course correction. Now it's it's probably a little bit more of a course correction than what will and ultimately end up being where the Wilds finish. They're not going to lose to everybody the rest of the way, but we're just seeing some things come back down to earth after the uh, hot stretch to start the season. So our next steps are to try to figure out what can come back, which players can rebound, from this uh, this cold stretch, and if the Wilds are are going to be able to kind of get off up get up off the mat and um, be able to uh, to get back into this thing and um, and give themselves a chance at a playoff run, so we will uh, continue to kind of pick up the pieces here the rest of this week and beyond to uh, to try to figure out you know what. I've I've seen, like I said, I've seen a lot of reaction on social media and I'm not pointing out right or wrong or that's a good take, that's a bad take. But as with what happens during these types of stretches, you see people suggesting this is the same old Minnesota Wild team that never does anything. 
Um, this team is the season's over. This team is not going to get this figured out. This is just who they are. They're, we need to take all of that, figure out what is true, what isn't, and just move forward. So we'll, we'll look next at uh, one of the big, I think, question marks for this team and a reason that they have lost some of their bite, some of their fight, some of their identity with uh, a couple of pretty big names that have uh, been out of the lineup. Uh, and we'll do that to continue today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. The calendar has flipped to the month of March. If you are still hanging on to some of your New Year's resolutions, I applaud you. One that can help you continue your goal of looking better or eating better is, of course, Built Bar. Built Bar are those delicious protein bars. And uh, if you are looking for a new flavor to kind of help kickstart your weight loss goals, try the Puffs. If you haven't yet, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy. They're not just a protein bar, they're a treat, and they're covered in 100% real chocolate. And uh, Built Bars as well, covered in 100% real chocolate. Most contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and just 17 grams of protein. So grab a Built Bar today and head to Built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off of your order. Again, use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild. Again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen every day. Once you're finished, make sure to swing over to the Locked on Now podcast. Nightly recaps of every NHL game with analysis from our local experts. Locked on Now is free and available wherever you get your podcasts. So two players, two main players have been out for the Wild over this stretch of games in which they have uh, fallen back to earth in a hurry. Matt Dumba and Jordan Greenway. Now, look at some of the biggest issues for this Minnesota Wild team. Defensively, the team has been leaky, and uh, they also have, it seems like, opponents have uh, really been able to kind of bully and push around the uh, the Wilds over the last few games. Now, on the defensive side, we've been vocal about the fact that uh, you're replacing Matt Dumba in the lineup with Jordy Bent. We saw Kalen Addison get another start against Calgary, nearly had a goal, and just, you can't even, you can't compare the two really with what they bring to the table. And every time we see Addison get into the lineup, he just, he looks, he looks the part. He looks like a player that is ready to make a major impact for this team if given the opportunity. When Jordy Ben is out on the ice, we see a lot of opposing players and his own teammates just kind of skating by him. And so looking at the lineup in and of itself, out Matt Dumba in Jordy Ben. Look at what that did to the defense itself. We talked about those numbers a couple of weeks ago. The uh, the player performance cards that Brett Marshall of the Sound the Foghorn podcast does. Everybody that was paired up with Jordy Ben during that early stretch of Dumba being out had their worst grades of the season. And so that is just not a recipe for success to have a player that is actually pretty good defensively in Matt Dumba and replace him with like a below average. I, I think I said replacement level at one point. He's not that. Jordy Ben is is not a replacement level player. And so you're losing a ton on defense, which is where some of these issues have um, have come about. But not only that, Dumba, if you put a short list together of the players that 
you can have respond to opponents being physical. Dumba, Duhame, Bukes, or uh, Felino, and Greenway is probably that's probably your short list. Your four that are able to do that. You're missing two of them in Jordan Greenway, and you know we've seen the breakup with Greenway being out of the grief line, which has been one of the best defensive lines in the NHL. So not only do you lose Matt Dumba, but you also lose that entire line, which you can employ against opponents to uh, to try to slow them down and to take some pressure off of your Kaprizov line, your Fiala line, um, to allow them to do their thing offensively. So. While Felino and Jewel Erickson Eck are in the lineup, it just they're not the same players without it, it's it's very similar to Victor Rask and the effect that he has on Kirill Kaprizov. Now, Greenway is is Greenway's a better player than uh, than Rask is. And a lot of the things that Greenway brings to the table are uh, are not something that can be boiled down to tangible goals and assists. So the wild defense struggling because that line has not been together for the uh, the last few weeks and you know this has been mentioned as well that Marcus Felino just looks like a different player since he came back from his suspension and so losing a little bit of bite there as well has uh, has certainly hurt this team too. So defensively the loss of Dumba I know he's a polarizing player. He's still a good player. And his loss certainly has been a massive one for this wild team, but there have been ripple effects of that as well in that uh, you know, you're know you losing your, your identity line that can uh, try to shut down the opponents. And so if we're gathering a net of some of the things that have led to this team going one and six in their last seven games. You know, some of that defensive identity that despite them making the shift to more of an offense oriented team still need to have the identity that you can, you know, you can muscle people around if you need to, that has not been there over this stretch. And so is that the entire story as to why this team is struggling as much as it is? No, but it's certainly part of the reason that this team is uh, is in the skids right now. We are going to finish today's episode by looking at the Mark andre Fleury debate and whether or not he makes sense for the Wild to target as a potential trade option. We'll do that next here on Locked on Wild. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen every day. Marc-Andre Fleury, a name you've heard a lot recently, a name that has been linked to the Minnesota Wild as, well, hey, if we need some help at the goalie position, go out and get Fleury. Go grab him. He beat the Wild in the playoffs with the Vegas Golden Knights. Decorated playoff performer. Uh, Go get him. I I don't know. It, it, much like some of those names in uh, in trade talks over the last couple of weeks that have been linked to the Minnesota Wild, your uh, Travis Boyd of the Arizona Coyotes, the uh, Rangers, or the Islanders forward whose name is escaping me right now. Those guys have been linked. And um, Chris Tierney of the Ottawa Senators as well. Those players have been linked. I don't know if that is an upgrade that moves the needle for this wild team. Um, If they're going to try to do, because now I I think we've seen it enough in the last two games. We've seen the effect of having a good team and making a deal to kind of take them over the top. We've seen that effect and how that has turned the Calgary Flames into an absolute juggernaut. So I think with how this season has gone, 
if you're going to make a move at the deadline, if Bill Guerin still believes that this team can get it done, try to replicate that effect. Because when fully healthy, this team was a very good team and beat very good opponents. They have not been fully healthy for quite some time. So there, there's been a lot of discussion as to if the Wild need to pursue a veteran goalie to try to take pressure off of Cam Talbot and Capo Kakinen. And Marc-Andre Fleury being on the Chicago Blackhawks has made him certainly a, uh, a potential target for the Wild to look at to uh, improve their, uh, their net minding. So I dove in to look at some of the numbers that uh, that he has been putting up uh, with Chicago. Chicago obviously is not having a good year. Shocker. Uh, but, you know, you look at some of Fleury's numbers and his uh, goals, his adjusted goals against average is 2.99, which is not far from his current goals against average of 2.83. His goals saved above expected is 2.3. So they take all the situations in which Fleury either makes a save or gives up a goal. And against your, say, you know, your, your average, your average goalie would save X amount. And Fleury has saved 2.3 goals above that. His really bad starts in which is uh, categorized by a save percentage below 85. His really bad starts is at 10, which is one off of his career high, which uh, came back in his Pittsburgh days in 2013, 2014. He's had two of those such seasons, but none before this year since 2014, 2015. And so you look at the overall numbers. I mean, yes, the goals against average has come back. He's got four shutouts. His save percentage is at 9-11, which is not terrible. Factors I worry about with Flurry is are his numbers this year, his struggles at the beginning of the season, was that him or was that because the team around him was as bad bad as they were. Um, Chicago, I think they lost their first 10 games, and I don't think they held a lead um, in any of their first like 15 games on the season. And so you look at you know what he has done recently, pulling it up on the fly, just want to see what his numbers have looked like as the season has gone on, because there obviously was that dreadful start. The team has been playing better since. And so he started the month of October with a 2.8, uh, a 4.63 goals against average. He gave up four plus goals in each of his five starts, except for his final start of the month, which was a one nothing loss to St. Louis. He gave up four goals, four goals, four goals, six goals. Goals against average in November dropped to 2.12. So he obviously played better, but still had four goals allowed against Carolina, five goals allowed against Winnipeg. In the month of December, 2.75 goals against average, five goals allowed against the Rangers, four goals allowed against the Capitals, and then three goals against Nashville, three goals against the Capitals again. In January, 2.85 goals against average. Five goals allowed against Detroit, four against the Wild, five against Arizona. And now in February, 2.74, four goals allowed against St. Louis, five goals against St. Louis, and five against the Wild. So. Yes, it's not a great team. It's not a great team around him. Chicago isn't. But those performances are what the Wilds are getting right now against similar teams. So is it an upgrade? 
I just I don't think so. It's it's a popular name because he beat the Wild in the playoffs last year, and so the old if you can't beat them, get them to play for your team mentality. And so if we're going to go down the road of how do we improve the goaltending, give Capo more starts. And if this if this season starts to further derail and the Wild look like a team that is not going to be a serious contender uh, for the playoffs, give Capo more starts because putting him in as the starter going forward, um, giving him a chance to, you know, really test out if you want to re-sign him to a long-term deal. That, I think, is the best route for this team to go goalie-wise, is just make Capo that uh, de facto starter. Talbot still, there are still opportunities for Talbot to get starts and to try to kind of get him back on track, but Flurry, Flurry is not, he's not a player. I, I don't think that uh, that represents a meaningful upgrade over what the uh, Wilds currently have. That is going to wrap it up for today's episode of Locked On Wild. So now that your first listen of the day is done, make your second listen Locked On Fantasy Hockey. Hosts Steel Roden and Flip Livingstone help you become the expert of your fantasy league. Locked on Fantasy Hockey is free and available wherever you listen to podcasts. Just like Locked on Wild, make sure to follow us wherever you listen to your podcasts and uh, make sure to give us a subscribe on all of your favorite social media platforms. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and social media as well. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Check out the Locked on Madness tournament going on right now on the Locked on Wild Twitter account. Help us uh, determine the greatest wild player that uh, that there is with the Locked On Madness tournament. We will continue to keep you updated throughout uh, the next few weeks leading up to the trade deadline. Check out tomorrow. We've got a preview of the Flyers game with Locked On Flyers hosts Rachel and Russ. So make sure to check that out uh, coming later tomorrow as well. And uh, we are hoping that the Wilds can get back on track, regardless of if they do or they don't. Locked on Wild has you covered with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.